Okay. I wonder it might take people a while to get oriented as well. Yes, I, yeah, I think the opening remarks just ended, right? So yeah, it might take a few moments. Trying to shrink the screen and I'm not sure. There we go. Now this had not occurred to me because people were registered, but if there is no one in the session, are you okay presenting the session anyway? Because we're gonna record it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Hi guys, just wanted to let you know that your session is live and everybody can see you. So you're good to start, okay? Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Um, my name is Sarah Faulkner, and uh, I'm a member of the OHAST Executive and uh, a secondary history and social science, uh, sciences teacher here in Ontario. On behalf of OHASTA and the Center for Canadian Studies, I'm pleased to introduce Stephanie Lett. Uh, she's a teacher from the Ottawa Carleton District School Board, and she teaches Canada, uh, Canadian and World Studies. She holds an MA in public history from Carleton University where her research uh, centered on historical thinking and the teaching of residential schools. 
She's been working with the Garnet's Journey Project team since 2017, and she's joined today by two other members of her team. Please welcome Michelle Hogue and John Walsh, both from the Department of History at Carleton University. Welcome to all of you. Thanks so much, Sarah, for the introduction and to everybody who's joining our session today. I'm really looking forward to introducing all of you to Garnet's Journey, uh, which is a resource for teaching the history of residential schools in Canada. What we're hoping for you today is that you can leave with practical classroom ready resources and an understanding of how to use Garnet's journey to guide student learning about residential schools and reconciliation in your classroom. Uh, so we will talk, talk about what Garnet's journey is, how it was created and how it's still evolving today. What's included in the Garnet's Journey Educator's Guide, including some examples of activities that you can use with your students, how you can access Garnet's Journey online, and then um, at the end of the presentation, we'll take questions. So please feel free to ask anything that you're wondering about as well. Garnet's Journey is an online educational resource that gives all Canadians the opportunity to witness the oral histories of residential school survivor Garnet Anjikaneb, who is an Anishinaabe elder, journalist, and community leader from the Laxal First Nation in Northern Ontario. It was created in 2011 by Garnet and his fellow journalist and friend Ashley Wright. And they actually began filming the videos with the intention of creating the transcript for a book. And although they're still working on that book as well, they decided to share Garnet's videos as an educational tool and a very powerful example of reconciliation in action. The goal of the project is to examine and explain the history of the Indian residential school system in Canada and in post-war Northern Ontario in particular. Garnet agreed to tell his story in order to educate the public about this chapter in Canadian history and also to contribute to the dialogue around reconciliation in classrooms in particular. Garnet tells the story of his life uh, in 30 short videos and one 20 minute documentary. And he talks about his experiences before, during, and after he attended Pelican Lake Indian Residential School in Sioux Lookout, Ontario in the 1960s. He describes the personal, cultural, and spiritual losses that he endured while he was at Pelican, his abuse both by an older student and by a dormitory supervisor named Leonard Hans, the legacies of these experiences through his life after he left the school, became a journalist, and started a family, his struggles with anger and alcoholism when he hid his full story from family and friends, and finally his journey towards healing as he went public with his story, forgave his abuser, and became an activist and a leader in his community. I'd like to share one of Garnet's videos to start, uh, just to give you an idea of how powerful his story is. In this video, Garnet describes his struggle to find peace and move forward after his experience at Pelican Lake Indian Residential School. In the video, he sits at Nigawants Bay on the Laxal First Nation, which was his home from birth to age seven, and the site of his family's trap line. He asks a really impossible and heart-wrenching question. Who would he be if he'd never been torn away from his family? So Sarah, if you could show that video now, that would be great. And Stephanie, you'll have to... Um... Here we go. I know that this is totally impossible, but I would give anything if I could turn the clock back. And continue on from a, uh, the residential school system interrupted a way of life. I would give anything to get that back. So as I sit here, I often wonder, who would I, who would I, what would I, have become if I didn't go to residential school. If I were, if I didn't go to residential school, who who would who would Garnet Ange gonna be today? And so 
when I think back about this place here, I'm really humbled by by those memories of a people, parents and grandparents, and how they wished the best for their people. You know, it's really coming back here in many ways is a is a spiritual rebirth for me that I can only continue on to to pass good things to my children and grandchildren and others to say that there are gifts that we need to celebrate no matter what we came to that there is resiliency in our lives and that uh, that we can come back to be healthy people uh, spiritually, uh, physically, mentally, holistically and pass on our good spirit to our children and grandchildren so that we can have healthy communities instead of what we have now today. And that's happening because as a people we are coming back in many ways but It'll never be the same again. I come back here and I just really honor the memories that I have here of growing up. I can see that little boy across the lake. I could see that little boy, how happy he was when he was growing up there. So that was one of the videos on the Garnet's Journey website that the Educator's Guide is built around. I'd like to talk a little bit about how the Educator's Guide came to be and how it's evolving um, and what some of the considerations were that we made when we were designing it. In 2017, Ashley Wright approached the Carleton University Department of History and the Carleton Center for Public History with the hope of finding a permanent home for the website and revitalizing some of the educational materials so that they could reach the broadest audience possible. So we put together a team that includes myself, uh, Michelle Hogue and John Walsh from the uh, Department of History and the Carleton Center for Public History and Ashley as well, uh, who is the uh, co-creator of Garnet's Journey and a journalist and educator as well. Garnet's health unfortunately doesn't allow for him to participate directly in the revitalization of the project, but he has authorized continued work on Garnet's Journey and he's involved in all major decisions. We're in the first stages of outreach now and uh, getting Garnet's voice out into classrooms and uh, introducing the educator's guide to teachers, but it's also still in the process of evolving. It's being reviewed by a consulting committee made up of three Indigenous stakeholders who are close to Garnet and who were recommended by him. And it's going to continue to take shape as well as teachers provide us feedback on their experiences using the material with students. So uh, at the end of pre the presentation, I'll let you know how you can contact us because as you do use these materials, we would love to hear what your thoughts are and your experiences using uh, the guide with your students. As we designed the new guide, there are a few important pillars that we kept in mind. First, the calls to action of the Truth and Reconciliation, excuse me, the Truth and Reconciliation Commission, uh, especially those that called for the development of age-appropriate curricula for K-12 students as well as calls that were happening across the country to strengthen First Nations, Métis and Inuit content in Canadian curricula. We focused on the Ontario grade 10 uh, Canadian history course in particular, but uh, the, the materials cross curricular and we have had teachers using it in different grades and subjects and courses already. We also emphasize historical thinking and students using evidence, making interpretations and challenging traditional narratives in history as well. But most importantly, we wanted Garnet's journey to reflect the realities of classrooms and not just the theory that curriculum is based on. So to ensure that we were meeting the needs of educators, I conducted a survey of teachers in the Ottawa Carleton and Ottawa Catholic School Boards about their experiences teaching about residential schools and what their needs were related to that topic. This was extremely informative and really helped us understand how Garnet's journey could be used to address teacher and student needs. 
One of the biggest concerns that teachers described to us was a, a lack of confidence in teaching material that they may not know a lot about themselves, especially if they don't have prior experience learning about it in their own high school or university education. As a settler Canadian myself, I know that I've experienced this challenge in my classroom too. So for teachers who wish to expand their knowledge of the topic of residential schools before bringing it to students, we included a historical backgrounder in the Garnet's Journey Education Guide that provides short overviews of topics related not only to the national history of residential schools, but also more specifically to Garnet's life and local story. So teachers can read about topics like correct terminology, the Indian Act, the process of truth and reconciliation in Canada, and the history of Pelican Lake Indian Residential School as well, before they approach those issues and topics with students. There are also links to a variety of sources about each topic in the, the guide. So if you have more specific or your students want to know more, um, more answers to those questions, you can know where you to go for answers. There are links to books and to other websites that you can dig a little bit deeper into those topics. For students who also come with varying levels of prior knowledge, the guide introduces them to a lot of topics throughout the unit, uh, including terminology, treaties, and Indigenous models of education as well. We also heard from teachers that they want to include authentic Indigenous voices and stories in their classrooms, like interviews with survivors and testimonies and other firsthand accounts. Garnet's journey really foregrounds an individual voice, not only in his videos, but also in the materials as well. Garnets have an op excuse me, students have an opportunity to hear Garnet share his, his story. And in my experience, they gain a real sense of connection with him as well as they do that. His story is unique and it's very clearly centered on his experience in Northern Ontario in the 1960s. So although it also teaches the broader history of residential schools in Canada, it has this sense of place that helps teachers avoid a pan-Indigenous narrative that doesn't acknowledge the distinctiveness and diversity of residential schools experiences in Canada uh, and in different time periods as well. Tied to this idea of authentic voices from the past is the use of primary sources. Our guide provides primary source evidence and activities that help students tackle big questions like why were residential schools created? What was daily life like for students at residential schools? And did Canadians know how bad the conditions were in the schools? A lot of the sources are tied directly to Garnet's story, uh, including, for example, those that you see on this slide. So for instance, um, this is a photograph from Pelican Lake and um, that is used for students to help them understand daily life in residential schools. And there are a series of discussion questions to guide students through the process of interpreting a historical photograph as evidence. You can also see here a handout that's included in the guide. Um, and this is used to help students answer the question, why were residential schools created? There's a letter here from an Indian agent in Laxal, and he's arguing that a school should be built in that community. And that is actually Garnet's home before he is taken to residential school in Sioux Lookout. The, um, the handouts are all classroom ready. So here you can see there's some contextual information at the top of the page that introduces students to the concept of an Indian agent, for example, and the context for this letter. There are discussion questions to help them interpret the source either individually or in small groups. And there's a transcript of the source too, so that they don't have to worry about interpreting an archival document uh, or a, a scan of that document. One thing that's been particularly clear as we are all teaching in a pandemic is that our time with each class is limited and teacher feedback really emphasized this even in a regular year that we have to manage available class time and cover a lot of material no matter what subject we're teaching. So we've organized Garnet's journey in a flexible way so that you can tackle this in a variety of different formats whether it is as one full unit or at several different times throughout a course. There is, for example, a 10 lesson unit plan in the guide and it's organized into the four different modules that you see here. This is a screenshot from our Google Classroom that I will share the link with uh, for you at the end of the presentation. So you can teach it as a full unit plan and there is a final assessment for that unit plan as well. So you can assess your students understanding of the content. 
There's also an optional introductory lesson that is based on the 20 minute documentary Garnet Full Circle, and that introduces Garnet's story without having to use every single video in the guide. There's a video guide as well that gives a description of each video, what it includes, and some discussion questions. So one thing that teachers can do is use that Garnet Full Circle documentary to introduce the story and then pick and choose different videos that highlight the topics they want their students to learn. So for example, during the spring lockdown, I only had three hours of instructional time every week with my students, and that wasn't a lot of time to cover this big topic. So I used that Full circle documentary and introduced the Garnet story to students. And then I focused in particular on the, sec the excuse me, the third and fourth module of Garnet's journey. So about the legacies of Garnet's residential school experience and also on the process of reconciliation in Canada and for Garnet, because those are the topics that my students hadn't been taught before and that they were really interested in learning. The story of residential schools is one of past and present trauma. So it was very important to us that we also include some guidelines in the educator's guide for creating safe spaces in the classroom for discussing this. Um, we included specific strategies for supporting students as they learn about this difficult history. There's also a final assessment, as I mentioned, in the educator's guide called What Does Reconciliation Mean to Me? And this uses creativity as a way of helping students respond to this difficult history. Students explore their role in reconciliation and they connect to Garnet's story in a creative way in a format of their choice. So that could be, for example, visual art, it could be creative writing, music, or even a transcript of a conversation with family. And I had one student do this this past spring. He had a conversation with his mother and his grandmother, and he took a transcript to hand in, which I thought was just a really incredible way of interpreting the assignment. Students then write a short description of their creative piece, connecting it to Garnet's story and to the history that they learned throughout the unit so that you can assess their understanding of content as well. Rather than requiring all students to write an essay or a test, the project gives them a way to express complex thoughts and feelings creatively and using their strengths and interests. It helps them work through their emotional reactions to Garnet's story and also recognizes the importance of incorporating hope and optimism when teaching a difficult past. They're examining Indigenous perspectives, both past and present, but also looking towards a positive future. So before I take your questions, I'd just like to show you a sample activity from the guide that uses primary source evidence to complement one of Garnet's powerful videos and help students understand the connection between his story and those of survivors across Canada. Uh, please be aware before we start that this sample activity does include discussion of physical and sexual abuse. This is from the last Garnet's Journey module, um, and it's an activity that helps students understand why and how Garnet disclosed his experience of abuse in residential school for the first time. Before this lesson, either by watching the Garnet Full Circle documentary or in previous lessons, students will understand that while Garnet attended Pelican, he was abused by an older student and by his dormitory supervisor named Leonard Hands. They learn the impacts that this experience had for survivors, their families and their communities, including struggles with anger, mental health issues and addiction. They also learn that for many years, Garnet did not speak at all about this experience, even with his wife or his family. So the first part of this lesson asks students to read a newspaper article from the Globe and Mail in 1990 that had a really profound impact on Garnet. And you can see the handout that students are given on the slide here. So it does include a screenshot from that paper. It's an article about Phil Fontaine, who was at the time the head of the Assembly of Manitoba Chiefs. And he revealed his own story of sexual and physical abuse at residential school as he called for a national inquiry into this issue. Fontaine revealed this on national television, and it shocked a lot of Canadians who had never heard about this uh, before. His testimony would prompt a lot of survivors, including Garnet, to publicly disclose their own experiences of abuse. 
students are asked to use this handout to fill out a chart about the five W's of the article. So who, what, where, when, and why, and that will help them to work through the article and all of its content. They then discuss that in small groups so that you can circulate and ensure that they all understand uh, the, the contents of that article. Then to follow up, students watch a video where Garnet describes reading this very same article and being prompted to share his story for the first time. So we're going to show that, that video to you now. One moment. <laughs> Can we clearly see the video? Yes. I want to talk about how that silence is broken. There was always something in the back of my mind that told me life is not right. The anger that I was feeling, the, the bitterness, outright hatred. The confusion. A lot of anger. Anger that was targeted to my parents, whom I was supposed to love. Why the hell did they let me go to some place like that? Why did they do that? I was very really angry at that. Very angry at the man who did this. Very bitter against the government. I hated the churches. And by God, I was mad at him too. And it showed in my life. It showed in my relationships. It showed in my family. It showed everywhere. Yeah, I'm a nice, cheerful guy. Yes, all right, but at the same time, all what I described was eating at me, eating away. So one day, 21 years ago to almost to the day, I'm sitting in a restaurant in Ottawa, Ontario, downtown hotel. my coffee, my breakfast, and my Globe and Mail newspaper. The headline, something in regards to a prominent native leader discloses abuse in residential school. National newspaper with that headline grabbed my attention in a way my attention had never been grabbed before. I read the paper, read the story. And all of a sudden I'm feeling That little boy who used to go to school on these grounds and what happened. The physical and the sexual abuse that happened. Not to mention the cultural, uh, mental, psychological abuse that happened. A 
particularly the sexual and the physical abuse that happened on these very, very grounds, all came rushing over me. In a way that was unmanageable for my emotions. And I'm sitting there with my colleague and my friend at the breakfast table. And I began to sob uncontrollably. And I looked at my friend asked him if he had read the article that I had just finished reading. He said, yes, he acknowledged it. And I remember asking him if he had ever been abused in residential school. which he said no. And somewhere was in my unhealthy being, I found the strength to say to him, I was abused sexually. That was the first time that I, I had ever told anybody in a in a way as I was a, of a, a sound mind. I was sober. I was hungover, but I was sober. I was able to find the strength to to say yes, I was abused. So that was in nineteen. 90, October 1990. That was the turning point of my life in terms of dealing with the negative effects of the Indian residential school legacy. So you can see how incredibly powerful and emotionally impactful Garnet's story is for helping us understand the legacies that residential school experience had for him and for his family. Um, and after viewing this video, students are also asked some discussion questions um, that prompt them to make a connection between what they saw in the video and what Garnet was speaking about and the primary source that they read. So they're asked, for example, what was Garnet's reaction to reading this article and what emotions did he feel? And why do you think it took a newspaper article to prompt Garnet to disclose the sexual abuse that he suffered at residential school? They're asked to think about why Garnet and other survivors would share their stories publicly. And in the next lessons after this, go on to consider how this helps survivors heal individually, but also call for a national process of reconciliation as well. So how can you actually access the Garnet Journey, Garnet's Journey Educator's Guide? Well, it's all available freely for you online. Um, Garnet'sJourney.com has all of the videos as well as a PDF of the Educator's Guide. Um, the videos are all YouTube videos as well, so that if you do use Google Classroom, for instance, or another online platform for your classes, you can use those links to include those directly in, um, in some posts for your students. We have also started some Google Classrooms, and there's a couple just technical things to note about this. Um, so the first code here that you can use to join our Google Classroom um, is open to non 
Google Suite for Education accounts. So if your school board does use the G Suite for Education, unfortunately, your board email address will not allow you to join that. Um, but you can use your personal email um, to join the Google Classroom and everything is posted individually, each lesson, handout and video, so that you can then download them um, to your own Google Drive and access them from there. If you teach with the Ottawa Carleton District School Board, I was able to create a Google Classroom that you can join um, with my own, um, my own email. So you can use that second code here to join that Google Classroom. And the advantage of joining the Google Classroom is that not only is everything available and organized for you there, um, but you can also post comments and post to the stream um, and contact us if there's anything that we can support you with as you use the materials um, and also connect with other teachers who are using it as well. I have posted, uh, I will post these links as well on the conference website under our session summary so that everybody has them available to them as well. I am going to take questions in just a moment, um, but if you are using the materials and you have questions for us or feedback, um, we would love to hear from you. So you can reach out to us through those Google Classrooms or by uh, contacting us at teachinggj at gmail.com. And we are happy to help with questions related specifically to the educator's guide on how to use it or to Garnet's story or to the broader history of residential schools. And uh, even if we don't know the answer to your question, we are happy to connect you with someone who does. Um, so please reach out to us at any time. And as I mentioned, the educator's guide is still in the process of evolving. So if you have feedback, if something works really well in your classroom, or if uh, you have some suggestions for us, we would love to hear that. Uh, we want them to be as useful and practical for teachers as possible. So please do contact us with suggestions. You can also reach out to share student work. Uh, we love to see what students are working on and to see their answers to that question, what does reconciliation mean to me? So please feel free to send us that as well. So I'd like to take questions now um, and please do share if there's anything that you're wondering about. Okay, and uh, the ask a question, um, uh, app should be visible to uh, those of you who are with us right now. And uh, once you ask your question, it should uh, appear for us so we can respond. And actually, we can leave the questions open for half an hour, and we'll still continue to collect them. So if you wanted to leave your email address, um, I'm sure that uh, Stephanie can get back to you uh, and share any resources or answer any questions later as well. Absolutely. Um and I'm happy to invite people to join those Google Classrooms if uh, that's easier than using the code as well. Or if you want to send us an email or put your email in that, in that field, then we can get in touch with you to share all those materials and, and answer questions. I wouldn't mind asking a question. <laughs> so, uh, and I guess as the host, uh, I, I get the privilege of doing this. So I, I'm really curious about the experience of working with, with Garnet and, and how you collected his stories and how you navigated um, working with him to be able to, to um, tell his story in an authentic and meaningful way that, that was also digestible to kids, to students. Thanks so much for asking that. Um, so 
my role in the project started after all of those videos were collected, actually. Um, and uh, it was Ashley Wright and Garnet who took that project on together. And um, they were actually hoping, and they are still hoping to publish a book about Garnet's story. And those videos were meant to form the transcript of that book. Um, and they had been friends for quite a long time and worked together at the CBC as journalists. Um, so they collected those stories and um, after they had done so, just found that the videos themselves were so powerful um, that they needed to share them and that those could be a really amazing tool, not just to educate the public, but also as an example of reconciliation uh, and them working together to share that story. So um, they had all those videos put together and shared them on the garnetsjourney.com website. Um, and it was um, when they approached us in 2017 to revitalize the project that we at Carleton were able to join and to start working on how we could um, bring those to teachers and to students in a really practical way. So the videos themselves are just incredible and Garnet's story is amazing and um, he's able to deliver it in such an impactful way. Um, and so for us, the the project was putting it together in a way that's targeted to curriculum expectations and um, provides practical resources so that teachers have something ready to go um, because their time is limited um, to make sure that they have the, the materials they need to be able to actually use that in the classroom and bring it to students. So it's been a really incredible opportunity. I know I'm I'm very grateful to have been a part of this team and um, Garnet is um, now involved in an indirect way in the project. Um, he's still very active in his community, but he has um, some health issues that prevent him from being very actively involved in this. That said, uh, we keep him involved in the major decisions for the project. Ashley's in touch with him very often about what we're doing. Um, and he also has chosen the members of our advisory committee, uh, um, which is made up of Indigenous stakeholders that he recommended. Um, so we're still working with him on the, on the project in an indirect way as well. Great, thank you. Well, uh, there, there doesn't appear to be any other questions at this point, but again, I'll leave the, the Q&A open. Uh, the app is um, was newly added to the session, so there is a possibility, and, and uh, my apologies if we can't see your questions, um, but um, hopefully they're being recorded and we can get back to you. Absolutely. And maybe what I'll do is I'll just um, put up the slide again with our email address so that if you do think of a question later, you're also welcome to reach out to us. Um, and please do. We'd love to hear from you, um, whether you have thoughts or reflections or questions or feedback. Okay, so thank you so much, Stephanie, uh, for sharing uh, like this incredibly powerful personal narrative uh, that, that uh, Garnet has given or gifted us. Um, bringing his story uh, into classrooms across Canada. So on behalf of OHASTA and the Centre for Canadian Studies, thank you for your time today. Thank you for this resource and please enjoy the rest of the conference. Thanks so much, Sarah, and thank you everyone who attended and who's watching.